It was a murder that sent shockwaves around the world. A prominent Russian journalist has been shot dead. Arkady Babchenko was an outspoken critic of President Vladimir Putin. But a day later, Arkady Babchenko was back from the dead. Tonight, for the first time, the inside story of the fake murder. They put pig's blood in my mouth. And then, when I was shot, I fell to my knees and coughed to make the blood splatter. Babchenko's wife tells her side of the story. You just can't believe it. You don't want to believe it. And we track down the hitman. It's a tale worthy of a spy thriller. But in an age of fake news, was the truth the real casualty? I'm Jonah Fisher. For the last few weeks, I've been on the trail of an extraordinary murder mystery. It happened here in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. And at the heart of it is one man. Здравствуйте. Меня зовут Аркадий Бабченко. И я не знаю, кто я. У меня не осталось ни страны, ни родины, ни дома, ни имущества. Babchenko is a Russian journalist. He fled Moscow last year after receiving death threats and got a job with a Ukrainian TV station. He's an outspoken critic of Vladimir Putin. He's a usurper, a little dictator who lives completely in his own world. He wants to be like Napoleon collecting together all Russian lands. But Ukraine, which sees itself as being at war with Russia, can be a dangerous place for Putin's opponents. In the last two years, several dissident Russian journalists and politicians have been killed in Kiev. Exactly who was behind the murders remains unclear. Our story begins earlier this year. Was Arkady Babchenko about to become the next target? Very nice to meet you. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm glad to see you. I'm happy to see you too. <laughs> Crazy times. Yeah. Simbaliuk yeah. tells me how in April this year he met an old contact, an arms manufacturer called Boris German. Simbaliuk claims German was looking to arrange the murder of Arkady Babchenko on behalf of a wealthy client. And when he told you that he wanted you to kill Babchenko, what did you say? And did you plan to go through with it? Simbalia tipped off the SBU, Ukraine's intelligence service. They suspected Russia could be behind it and decided to stage the killing of the journalist. The SBU's boss is Vasil Khritsak. Why was the decision taken to fake Arkady Babchenko's murder? 
Because we were told that there were several units in Ukraine and that this assassination is just a test run for others. Only by staging this crime could we get the list of targets. We had to know more about who was involved in preparing and commissioning this terrible crime. What was the price for killing Yanovchenko? Did you discuss how the murder would be carried out? It was time to let Arkady Babchenko know that there was a price on his head. SBU agents told him of their audacious plot. They wanted to stage his murder to flush out those who'd ordered the killing. My first thought was not to trust them, that maybe it's a setup. I just wanted to grab my family and flee somewhere like Australia or Antarctica where they can't find us. But then it became clear to me, why should we run? Here are people who came to kill and we have a chance to stop them. We need to do this. Why should we do nothing? Now Arkady Babchenko had to let his wife Olga in on the plan. My first reaction was not shock, but fear. That awful fear when you realize this is not a movie or TV. This is really all happening right now to your family in your house. And you just can't believe it. You don't want to believe it. According to the story we'd agreed beforehand, I came back from the grocery store. I opened the door, and at that moment I was supposedly shot in the back. When I was shot, I fell to my knees. SBU agents had arranged a makeup artist to help stage the murder scene. When I was lying on the floor, the makeup artist put pig's blood inside the bullet holes. My lips were smeared. They poured the blood into my mouth. They poured it underneath me. Fake assassin Alexei Simbaliuk and I retrace his steps from that night. After the killer left, I waited a little while, then I called an ambulance. I explained the situation that I'd come out of the bathroom and found my husband in a pool of blood. The police arrived quickly, after about five minutes. The first officers were aware of the special operation, but they also brought with them lots of other policemen who didn't know. My wife told them I'm a Russian journalist, and they all said, oh, here we go again. Paramedics were also soon on the scene. They'd been briefed on the fake murder plot and were ready to play along. They started to treat me because there were other people there who could see us through the window. We drove for a while, and then, as planned, I began to die.
Now the fake murder plot moved into its next phase, starting with a message to Arkady Babchenko's old friend and boss, TV journalist Ida Mushtabayev. I took a car and immediately began to look for him in hospitals. As his wife told me, he was wounded and had to be taken away. On the way, I got the tragic news from police that he died in an ambulance. So I went straight to his apartment. It's a huge loss for journalism because he was one of the few individuals who wrote the real truth about Russia. And that's why he was killed. Ida arrived first. It hurts to remember how he wept like a child whose mother had just been killed in front of him. I've never seen a man cry so much before. He just howled. And how did that make you feel? Because of course you knew that it was all fake. To watch those close to you suffering is unbearable. We arrived at the morgue. Throughout all this, I had to act like I was a murdered man because there were journalists waiting outside. The strangest two to three hours of my life was when I was sitting in the morgue, wrapped in a sheet like Gandhi, smoking and watching TV news about what a wonderful guy I was. And next door, a pathologist was sawing a skull, performing an autopsy. What were you thinking about while Arkady was at the morgue? I envied him because he didn't have to talk to anyone. I thought he was probably in a peaceful place at this point. And I was stuck in this agony. That night, the SBU leaked this picture of the fake murder scene onto social media. News of Babchenko's death was about to go global. The fake assassination took place just weeks after Russia was blamed by the British government for poisoning the Skripals in Salisbury. Now Russia was being accused once again, this time of involvement in the plot to kill Babchenko. We started to hear accusations of our country in being involved in this crime as it was presented by Ukrainian officials. Within a couple of hours, we were trying to plan how we can present the truth because we're accused in doing all evil on earth. Meanwhile, in Kiev, SBU agents had the middleman, Boris German, under surveillance hoping it would provide conclusive proof that Russia had ordered the killing. Yes, we had a plan to wait for longer to allow things to develop. The next day, Boris German was supposed to pay off Zimbaliuk for the completed job, but there was lots of noise around the case. All the media was talking about it. At that point, we found German had bought a ticket to leave Ukraine, so we had to take some steps. SBU agents swooped on an unsuspecting Boris German. Twenty hours after the murder, the SBU called what seemed a routine press conference. No one expected this. 
Babchenko was back. Watching on, his colleagues at the news channel, ATR, who'd been reporting on his death all day. When I saw him, I felt a huge sense of relief that he was alive. I ran outside and just lay on the grass for over an hour looking at the sky. It felt very good. First, I'd like to apologize for what all of you had to experience, for what you had to go through. I've buried friends and colleagues many times, and I know the sickening feeling. Newsrooms across the world backtrack fast. Tonight at 10, the Russian journalist reported to have been murdered in Ukraine is alive and well after all. But the questions soon mounted. Why had a self-styled truth-teller agreed to play the starring role in a fake news story? When they tell you someone is paid to have you killed, do you say, no, I refuse help, because it will violate the ethical standards of journalism? If you do that, people will be murdered, because this network will not be exposed. Go on then, but I won't be part of it. So will we ever know the full truth about who wanted to kill Babchenko? The SBU say that when they arrested Boris Girman, they found a hit list, which he'd been sent from Russia. But they have yet to produce clear evidence of a link to Russia's security services. The role of the Russian security services in preparing the assassination of a Russian citizen and journalist, Babchenko, will be proved by us in court. I am sure of that. Russia crossed a red line a while ago. Russia is using illegal methods. Russia is trying to kill its opponents on foreign soil to intimidate those opponents who are still in Russia. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely absurd. Russia as a state has nothing to do with Arkady Babchenko. He's a free man in the free world. He can do what, whatever he wants. And actually, before uh, that, uh, that case, nobody even, I mean, in the international community, on a high level, nobody, was, nobody has no idea uh, who is Arkady Babchenko. Honestly. <laughs> If there is a Russian link, as Ukraine claims, it leads through the only man who's so far been arrested, the middleman. This is a court hearing for Boris Gurman, the man allegedly at the center of this plot. It's a chance for him to put his case and try and explain his role in this bizarre episode. Boris Gurman admits plotting, both with the fake assassin and a contact in Russia. But his defense is that he, too, was playing a role and was also working with Ukraine's SBU. Mr. Gurman, why should we believe that you didn't want to kill Arkady Babchenko? Mr. Gurman, what this ultimately boils down to is, are you working as an agent for Russia? Mr. Gurman's story has changed several times, and despite repeated requests from the BBC, he's been unable to back up his claim that he was working with the SBU. So what are we to make of this extraordinary tale, where nothing is quite as it seems? We definitely believe the operation is a success. Even if you just save the life of Arkady Babchenko, it is a success. 
Thanks to this operation, we've also got a list of 47 potential targets. Journalists, activists past and present, citizens of the Russian Federation. Why should I believe what you're telling me now? I went out there and I reported what your organization told us that night. It turned, to be, it turned out to be lies. Now you're speaking to me again. Is this the truth this time? This murder was being prepared for real. Real money was being paid. Other units were working for real and the list of 47 potential victims is real. So the ends ultimately have justified the means? Definitely. But in the context of the propaganda war with Russia, could this end up being a massive own goal? Did they realize what they did? Because nobody will trust uh, Ukrainians and uh, Ukrainian government uh, anymore in any sort of future cases. The show over, its leading players are now trying to move on. What's next for you after this, Alexei? What's your future hold? Of course I am worried. I do not feel safe. At the moment, yes, we're in a safe place. But eventually it will be necessary to go out into the wider world. And what will happen then? We don't know. I do not control my destiny anymore. Everything has gone down the drain. Life is once again broken. And still, you dare ask me why I criticize Putin so much? That's why I don't like them. Why the hell do they have to come here and kill people? The world is in the grip of an information war. A battle of facts against fakes, truth versus fiction, with trust, a priceless commodity. Babchenko survived, but the work of those fighting for the truth has become that much harder.